friends, welcome back to my channel. Today it is time for our April wrap up to chat about my reading in April, how it went. Um, I've got to be honest, it was a pretty meh reading month. Like, just average. Nothing exciting. <laughs> my disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. As we'll talk about, you know, last month if you watched my wrap up, it was one of my best reading months ever in terms of number of books. I think I read 16 books, something like that, in uh, March. I just can't sustain that level. Like, <laughs> I knew it would take a dip in April. Because when I have a great reading month, then I kind of fall down a little bit the next month. But that's natural, you know, we can't read the same amount every month. So yeah, we're going to chat about my reading in April. We'll go through my reading stats, then we'll go through each book and just what I rated them. And then we'll do my disappointment, surprises and hits. There's not a lot because I don't feel like much stood out either way, negative or positive. Anyways, should we just get into it? <laughs> okay, so in the month of April I read nine books, but two of those are reread, so only seven new books I hadn't read before. Total number of pages read was 2,662, which means an average pages per day of 89. So again, a lot of you know, I like the average to be above 100 on average. Like I've said many times, some days I read zero pages, some days I read 300. I'm not a particularly like linear, <laughs> same amount of pages every day kind of reader. The average pages per book was 295. I feel like a lot of the time my kind of average pages per book hovers around that 300 mark. What was it last month? Because I know I read a few short books. 262, so higher than that. But I feel like it kind of often hovers around that. I like to read a few novellas or short stories every month just to kind of keep up keep up the flow. You know, some 400 page books, some 200 page books is kind of the average for me. Okay, so my average rating technically was a 3.83, which is very similar to last month. I think it was like a 3.85 last month. But if you remove those two rereads, which were five stars, we'll chat about them in a sec. My average rating was a 3.5, which feels more realistic to my month. I feel like I enjoy rereads, but I don't feel like they set the tone for a reading month. The new books that I read set the tone for a reading month for me. And so yeah, like a 3.5, <laughs> just average. That's pretty low for me. I think my average rating overall was like a 3.9. Uh, so 3.5 is quite low for me. A lot of threes this month, just very, very blah. Meh. Very blah, I can't lie to you. It just felt like, ugh, you know, fine. I was like, do I even do a wrap up? I had some good books and some low books. Like, there's stuff we can talk about, but it just feels like, eh, eh, you know? <laughs> the average time a book had spent on my TBR was six months, which is pretty low, but that's because there were quite a few books that A, there was, I did a booktube twin test where some of the books weren't on my TBR and I had to buy them for that. And that means they'd been on my TBR for zero months. And the rereads I counted as zero months because they weren't on my TBR, I'd read them, you know? In terms of genre, I read six fantasy, one mystery and two thriller. Wow, that's not a very good split. <laughs> that's like, usually I read a very wide array of genres. You will rarely see one genre having over 50% of the reading I did this month. Did I really read that many fantasy? Okay. <laughs> In terms of the source, four were physical and five were the mixture. It means I had the audiobook and the physical book. In terms of audience, I read five adult, one middle grade, and three YA, which is by far, like, I feel like the most YA I've read in any single month so far this year. I haven't been reading a ton of YA, and I enjoyed the YA that I read this month. I feel like it was fun to read a bit more YA. So maybe we'll continue to feed that into future months. By the way, I read some of the Wayward Children series as we'll talk about, and I do class that as adult. I don't think it's YA. I think it technically is adult, so I class it as adult, even though we're following young characters. In terms of format, I read six novels and three novellas. Oh, I didn't tell you the individual star ratings. So in terms of individual star ratings, I had one two star, two three stars, two 3.5 stars, one 4.5, and three fives, but again, two of those five stars were rereads. Okay, in terms of series stats, three books were part of a series, three books were standalones, two were first in a series, and one was last in a series. Finally, we finished a series, baby. <laughs> it only took us four months of the year. I'm hoping to finish at least, let's say two. Finish at least two in, <laughs> in May. Although we did start two, and I am continuing both of those series, we finished one, and that's a win. A win is a win, baby. <laughs> 
In terms of where the books were from, five were gifted, quite a lot of them were gifted, three were books I bought myself and one was sent to me by the publisher. In terms of author stats, one was a debut, five were authors I read from before and three were new to me. Is that all the stats? Yeah, that's all of the stats. Okay, let's just go through each of the books now and give their ratings. First I read Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters and I gave this 3.5 stars. Then I read Along the Salt by Sea by A. Debra Baker aka Sean Maguire and I gave this 3 stars. House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland which I gave 3 stars. Confessions by Kane Minato I gave 2 stars. The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson I gave 4.5 stars. Finney Donovan is Killing It I gave 5 stars. Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Yang I gave 3.5 stars and this was the series that I finished this month. And then I did rereads of Come Time down and across the green grass fields by Shauna Maguire and these were both five stars again of course <laughs> okay that's all of the books I read this month let's get into the disappointment surprise and hits but again there's not a ton I feel like the tone of this is down let's come on energy up everyone <laughs> Okay, disappointments. I have two this month. Let's start with the biggest. <laughs> we have Confessions by Kane Minato. I don't even want to talk about it. Don't even want to talk about it, okay? Because I feel like the whole of Booktube loves this book, apart from me. I didn't love it. I would like to defend myself, but sadly, that's the truth. So we're following a teacher who's daughter, what do you know before we go into this? Okay, yeah. <laughs> her young daughter was murdered by two pupils in her class and she's kind of like telling them, yeah, I know what you did at the beginning. And then this goes on to have like, I think six or seven, I don't even know. Different perspectives of different characters in the book talking about the events of what happened for them. And generally I feel like everyone on booktubers love this. Everyone on booktubers give this five stars. I feel like I was reading a different book. You know, usually when I rate a book low, I am able to say, if everyone else loved it, I'm able to say like, I can see it, right? I can see how you could love that. It wasn't for me. I'm convinced I read a different book because I don't get it. I've come to the conclusion from, I think I read six stories in March maybe, but I didn't love that either. And both these books have in common is that we've got like one central event and the whole book is different chapters, one chapter per perspective, telling their perspective of what happened. And I just don't like that. It's not interesting to me because I feel like once I've read the first chapter, I basically know the whole story, right? I find if I've met these characters or know of these characters, I feel like in this, they're so like, one dimensional, I can kind of predict everything that's gonna happen. Some reviews and this are like, oh my God, I was gasping. There were so many twists. What twists? What twists? What twists? Nothing shook me. You're shocked? You're shocked? I feel mean, but not every book is for everyone. You know, I think it's interesting that I've noticed that pattern that I don't like one central event being retold again and again from different perspectives. It just doesn't work for me. I obviously find it boring. It's again, I think it's similar to like, I struggle sometimes with dual perspective, dual timeline. Like I think I do just like one linear story. I like the, is it save the cat? I don't know, like the traditional story timeline and story arc I think I like. But I do like books that mess with it in different ways but something about perspective, story being broken up in some way doesn't work for me. And then I'd say my other disappointment was the March book club pick for my patron. I always tend to read it in the next month so I read it super close to our live show. And that was House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This one we're following these sisters who disappeared as children, came back changed slightly and we're following them in the present day and one of their three sisters and one of them has gone missing. And this is a book that over time so many people have told me I was gonna love. You know I love Wilder Girls, this has got some kind of similar body horror-esque stuff and so many people told me I'm gonna love the writing, I'm gonna love the way this was told. I didn't. I didn't like the writing in this. <laughs> I just, I didn't like it. It felt so melodramatic, uh, poorly written, one dimensional characters, whoa. I'm upset guys, I'm really upset because so many people told me I was gonna love this and I just don't get it. The most hideous experience for me to go through how horrible I'm shit. This is a book I read right at the start of the month and I feel like I've kind of pushed it out of my brain, but I didn't feel like the mystery was particularly compelling. I didn't feel like the character relationships were that compelling. There were elements of it that I did enjoy. Could I tell you what they are right now? Not really. <laughs> 
some of the sister relationships I guess I enjoy. You know, sister relationships is usually something that I love. I, I actually, I think I should have watched my book club live show for this before coming and speaking to you because I cannot remember anything. <laughs> I do like, it goes there with the ending, right? I predicted the ending. I think the ending is fairly obvious what's gonna happen in this book. But I do like that it goes there, right? It commits to the bit, which I like. Right, that's the positive for this. I gave it three stars. It wasn't terrible, but it was a disappointment for me because this could have been like a five star prediction. Like it was up there. It was up there with the girlies. You know, some people told me I love it. Sisters, body horror, mystery, like, oh, you know, creepy. It's my kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't love it. <laughs> Surprises, I only have one. Like I said, it's pretty sparse pickings this month. And that was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. I read this and Confessions and the one book we're gonna see in hits in my Book Sheep Twin Test episode with How to Train Your Gavin. So if you watch that vlog, then you've heard me speak about these books. So we'll keep it brief. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. <laughs> But I gave The Kind of Killing 4.5 stars. I was really shocked by just how much I enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it, guys. I was shocked. So in this, we have these two characters who meet on a plane. The guy jokes that he wants to kill his wife because she's having an affair. He's like, I could just kill her, you know? And the woman that he's met on the plane is like, why don't you? <laughs> So we're kind of following their perspectives and I loved this book. It had like, um, it had that thing where there's a midway twist that completely changes the trajectory of the book and shakes it up on you. And like, you get too comfortable with what facts you think you know and it completely switches up on you. I love when a mystery book does that. I just thought this was a solid, great thriller. If you've never, if you've never read thrillers, right? Maybe you're a fantasy girlie, maybe you're a horror girlie, whatever. You've never read a thriller, right? That was me once. My first thriller is up there. It was Ten of the Key by Ruth Ware. I'd never read a thriller before. I think this is a perfect beginner's thriller. It just does so many tropes and like plot beats of a thriller so well. You know, I think it's a beginner's thriller. Perfect. It's great. It was a great thriller. The way stuff twisted, the way you rooted for certain characters whilst thinking, should I be really rooting for them? The pace in this was wonderful. It kept you moving. Oh, I loved it. It was so good. The only reason it was not a five is that it is like fairly typical. It wasn't, you know, for me, increasingly a five has to do something new, something different or something fresh. And this didn't really do that. It was just like a solo thriller, you know? But this is my first Peter Swanson and I know everyone clowns on all of his like newer books and doesn't like them. Maybe I'll give you a chance with some other books. I think I will pick up The Kind Worth Saving which has just come out, which is the sequel to this. So yeah, woohoo. <laughs> And then we had one hit this month. Like I said, I had three five stars, but two were those uh, rereads of the Way Return series. So no need to chat about them here. But my other hit, which you guys have told me for so long that I was gonna love is Freddy Donovan is Killing It by El Cosmano. It's incredible, it's incredible, it's incredible. I you deserve an Oscar. You actually deserve an award. I need to get my hands on the rest of the series and not put it off reading it. Like I need to just read it because it's made for me. It's made for me. I just, I. I spent so long not reading it out of fear. I was terrified. I was petrified. Like, what if I didn't love this? Anyways, so we've got Finley Donovan, who's a single mum, struggling for money. She's a writer, but she's like struggling with all the stuff going on in her life to write at the moment. She meets up with her editor at the coffee shop. She's giving her her plot. Another woman overhears, thinks Finley Donovan is a hit woman and hires her to kill her husband. And Finley just gets like wrapped up in this world of shenanigans and murder and darkness. And she's just trying to survive. She's like bumbling her way through it. Firstly, Finley does some stupid shit in this. I've got to say, like Finley has not watched enough true crime. <laughs> You're like, Finley, don't do that. Like, she's leaving traces of stuff that she shouldn't here, there, and everywhere. Let's just say that. I'm like, girl, you're stressing me the fuck out. But this is so fun. It's such a fun mystery. I love the relationships in this. There's a really strong relationship between her and her, like, nanny, ex-nanny, kind of. I hate her husband with a burning passion. If I could kill any fictional character, it would probably be him. Actually, no, I feel like death is too, is too, uh, too kind a punishment for him. <laughs> I just, like... Oh, I hate men. I hate men. I really hate men. I really hate men. I really just hate men. One way to get me to hate a man is to a man who's cheated and broken up a family with young kids. Like that gets me going. Like I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. I'm so excited to continue the rest of the series. I thought the writing was so great. Again, the pacing in this was really good. It just kept you moving, kept you wanting to read more. Listen, you guys told me for years I was gonna love Finley and I did. This is the standout of the month for me. This is the best of the month. Yeah, good old Finley, eh? Finally read it. <laughs>
So there we have it. That was my reading month for April. Not the best reading month, not the worst. It was okay. <laughs> I felt a bit meh, but you know, Finley Donovan was there. And I reread some Over Children and Peter Swanson shocked me. So if everything else was like a three star, basically. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching this video. If you got to the end of the video, comment a sunglasses emoji for Finley. Comment that down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love ya. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.